Hello and welcome to the Harry Edwards Healing Minute. Wherever you are, whatever time of the day, thank you for joining us. My name is Bev and welcome to everyone. Make yourself comfortable, relax and if you wish, close your eyes. Be aware of your breath, in with the new and out with the old. Clear your mind of any worries. Allow your body to release and let go of any negative thoughts and tension. Imagine yourself anchoring to Mother Earth through the soles of your feet, like the roots of a tree, reaching a pink pool of love and light. Feel yourself becoming still and centred and the relaxation beginning to wash over your whole body, in your toes, your feet, ankles and legs, washing over your knees and thighs. Feel that wave of relaxation continue to move up your body, into your back and rising up your spine, into all the muscles of your abdomen and chest, becoming loose and relaxed, free of any tightness. Allow the relaxation to spread into your shoulders, your arms, all the way to your fingertips, then up to your neck and face. Allow your head to rest comfortably. Feel your jaw muscles relax and with all the tiny muscles in and around your eyes, feel a softness over your face. Feel calm and know that you are safe and at ease. Visualise yourself wherever your favourite place is, or perhaps inside the sanctuary chapel, in the Groves Garden, Cherry Tree Walk or the surrounding woodland of Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary, but wherever you want to be. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies and wherever you are right now. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. The Sanctuary Prayer Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me may be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought, bringing me into closer harmony with those around me and with a divine healing purpose for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you all. Amen. The Great Invocation From the point of light within the mind of God, light has come forth into the minds of men. Light is now anchored on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, life has come forth into the hearts of men. Love has returned to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, purpose is guiding the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the race of men, the plan of love and light is working out 
and is cleansing harmful energies. Love, light and power are restoring the plan on earth. Touched by angels. We are touched by angels and walk where angels tread. They will guide us, walk beside us through the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and gentle healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand. And forever touched by angels, we walk hand in hand. We now ask that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder and perhaps in your own thoughts and written words receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and people for whom they have requested distant healing. Also send healing for the animals of the world and especially to our animal friends. And let's not forget the animals and the creatures of the rivers, of the water, of the sea. Now for a minute of silence while these healing energies are sent out to the world. May all be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Our thanks and blessings for your help today in sending out the wonderful healing energies and to all our friends in spirit, thank you. Please continue to contact us in the normal way. You can visit our website for details. We are still just a phone call away. We can chat with you if you need to talk with someone. You can email us or still write a letter. We can still send you distant healing. We offer telephone healing and we can also contact you via Skype or Zoom for healing too. A few notices. Um, unfortunately, this afternoon they will not be a meditation. It has been uh, postponed and we will let you know when it will be reinstated. But as we are unable to hold our carol service at the sanctuary this year, once again, join us on Facebook and Zoom on Sunday the 13th of December at two o'clock in the afternoon. Presented by Doreen with Christmas traditions, carols, readings and poems. Thank you. The story I'm reading today is called A Christmas Story and it was written in 1982 by Nancy W. Gavin. It's just a small white envelope stuck amongst the branches of our Christmas tree. No name, no identification, no inscription. It has peeked through the branches from our tree for the past 10 years or so. It all began because my husband, Mike, hated Christmas. Oh, not the true meaning of, of Christmas, but the commercial aspects of it, overspending. 
the frantic running around at the last minute to get a tie for the Uncle Harry and the dusting powder for Grandma, the gifts given in desperation because you couldn't think of anything else. Knowing he felt this way, I decided to bypass the usual shirts, sweaters, ties and so forth. I reached for something special for Mike. The inspiration came in an unusual way. Our son Kevin, who was 12 that year, was wrestling at a junior level at the school he attended and shortly before Christmas there was a non-league match against a team sponsored by an inner city church. These youngsters dressed in sneakers so ragged that the shoelaces seemed to be the only thing holding them together presented a sharp contrast to our boys in their spiffy blue and gold uniforms and sparkling new wrestling shirts and shoes. As the match began, I was alarmed to see that the other team was wrestling without any headgear, a kind of light helmet designed to protect wrestlers' ears. It was a luxury, a luxury the rag team obviously could not afford. Well, we ended up wallop walloping them. We took every weight class, and as each of the boys got up for, from the mat, they swaggered around in, in their tatters with false pri privado, a kind of street pride, a kind of street pride that couldn't acknowledge defeat. Mike, seated beside me, shook his head sadly. I wish just one of them could have won, he said. They have a lot of potential, but losing like this could take the heart right out of them. Mike loved all kids and he knew them, having coached little league football baseball and lacrosse. That's when the idea of his present came. That afternoon I went to a local sporting goods store and bought an assortment of wrestling headgear and shoes and sent them anonymously sorry, <laughs> to the inner city church. On Christmas Eve I placed the envelope on the tree. Note inside telling Mike that I, what I had done and this was his gift from me. His smile was the greatest thing about Christmas that year and in succeeding years. For each Christmas, I followed the tradition, one year sending a group of mentally handicapped youngsters to a hockey game, another year a cheque to a pair of elderly brothers whose home had burned down to the ground the week before Christmas, and on and on. The envelope became the highlight of our Christmas. It was always the last opened on Christmas morning and our children, ignoring their new toys, would stand with wide open anticipation as their dad lifted the envelope from the tree to reveal its contents. As the children grew, the toys gave way to more practical presents, but the envelope never lost its allure. The story doesn't end there. You see, we lost Mike last year due to the dreaded cancer. When Christmas rolled around, I was so wrapped in grief that I barely got up to put the tree up. But Christmas Eve found me placing an envelope on the tree and in the morning it was joined by three more. Each of the children, unbeknown to others, had placed an envelope on their tree for their dad. The tradition has grown and someday will expand even further to our grandchildren standing around the tree with wide-eyed anticipation watching as their fathers take down the envelope. Mike's spirit, like the Christmas spirit, will always be with us. May we all remember each other and the real reason for the season and his true spirit this year and always. God bless, pass this along to your loved ones. This story first appeared in Women's Day magazine in 1982. My mum had sent this story in as a contest entry in which she subsequently won first place. Unfortunately, she passed away from cancer two years after the story was published. 
but our family still keeps the tradition started by her and my father and we have passed it on to our children and it was written by her son Kevin Gavin. Thank you for listening. Again remember there will not be a meditation this afternoon but still join us on Sunday for the Christmas carol service. Love, light and blessings to you all and take care. I'm finishing today with a little bit more of festive music. is the lily flower and Mary oh sweet Jesus Christ to be our sweet Savior the rising of the sun and the running of the deer the paying of the merry organ sweet singing in the choir the holy bears Bye for now everybody, take care and join us tomorrow with John for another minute.